Hey guys, so I'm doing something a little bit different today. Um, I'm heading to P3 Tuning in Liverpool and I'm taking B, my MT07, and we're going to have a tuning session on my MT. So I'm really looking forward to it and the results, but I'm going to vlog it so I'll talk you throughout, through it throughout the day. Um, and in case you're wondering, I'm wearing my Knox Armour gear and I love it. <laughs> Yeah. Same with fifth and sixth. Fifth, sixth has got a top speed limiter, so we'd only get to a certain revs, and then it just boom, it just cut you down. Mm -hmm. So rather than do that, we run it in fourth gear. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's actually you could do some work. Okay. Cool. <laughs> the mapping really is we we disable that, yeah. so that then it's not trying to target again. Because if it keeps trying to target the the closed loop range, yeah. it's set to from the manufacturer, it's dead lane. Yeah. That's why power commanders have now slowed down a little bit because of the new Euro emissions, like the BM, for example. They had to change that again, you think yeah. Yeah. This does not have a turn valve, so it doesn't have a secondary bleed system, which means that it can't. So the guys are just um, working on the bike and the boring stuff out of the way, and then I'm going to call them so we can video the more interesting stuff because it's quite a tedious job. But um, yeah, we've got Netflix and everything in the waiting room, but the guys are really nice. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Okay. 
table. So if you look now at 24% rock. Yeah. So these runs, the difference in the runs is what percentage stock on that. So for example, the thing is that's the way the table works. The table's an overlay of your revs against your throttle. When I do the intake air pressure, it's revs against intake air pressure. Yeah. As I say though, we don't go on to the intake air pressure sensor to do it because the way it works is quite complicated. So it's easier to roll through that area and map it rather than try and hold it in specific mm -hmm. intake air pressure table. Like a, a real world bad. Yeah, yeah so and the only way benefits of ECU flashing? With the modern bikes now, due to the oil emissions, they're completely lean anyway. So, first thing foremost, it's getting the fuel and right so the bike feels better, the throttle response is better, the bike debate should be out the factory, but unfortunately the manufacturers can't do it now due to emissions. Other benefits, depending on what bike we use yours for an example, we're able to turn the O2 sensor off, again, it helps with getting the fuel and right. Something like a power command, unless they provide an O2 eliminator, we can't do that. The fuel deceleration cutters again is a big one which you'll find on the road now. As you shut the throttle, you're not going to be in a lean patch when you're getting back on. So mid corner, when you're getting back on, it's going to be smooth and it's going to be a nice transition. So if you get more into the more complicated bikes, so when you've got fly-by wire, it's acting so launch control, 
the capabilities are endless to what you can do to it. Whereas something like the fuel module, whether it's Power Commander Rapid Bike, Bazaar's, it's just solely the fuel. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, well. for example, on this now, the big, the big issues with a lot of the YAMs, with the MT10s, MT07s, nines, the lot, is the deceleration fuel foot, which is what Paul just said. Mm -hmm. So basically when you're off and on throttle, it's quite jerky, quite aggressive. The deceleration fuel cut on its own is going to make that feel smoother, but then by actually doing the custom mapping all the way through the range, it actually picks it up all the way. So that transition off on throttle to about 40% throttle, which is where it's really mean, the standard, that's just crisp. That's where your biggest gains are. So even mm -hmm. if you just sat hanging around 30 mile an hour to 70 mile an hour, it's losing all that pulsing. So it'll just sit and cruise on. On top of that, yes, you'll gain more power there, and then all the way through the red range, you'll gain more power. But, as a standard bit here, flat stake, they're pretty good anyway. So you don't gain huge brake horsepower at the top, it's just more through your mid-range. But as I say, that transmits through, whether you're just commuting every day or whether you're a track rider, it's gonna, you, you can really feel that mid-range grunt and that transition off on throttle. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're the big gains for it. Um, <laughs> quick rundown of what, actually what the graphs look like. So basically for this, this is a rolling through. The blue run is our original run. Now, I haven't got the TPS value on it on, on for the first set of runs, but you can see that we're just really hanging through the 30 range and then accelerating through to 70 mile an hour and then we give it the gas from there. You can see that this is our fuel target value, which is the red dotted line. Anything above that is really lean. Now anything over this 14 mark is really, really lean. That's an area that we really don't want to be in. It's going to generate quite a lot of heat, makes the bike feel quite aggressive as well, quite sharp, and you'll feel it pulsing. So what we're trying to do is obviously pull it down to the line. So you can see on the original run, it, it runs lean everywhere and then only when you give it the beans and you get up to the top that it starts to pull itself back in. Now the red is our final run and this bottom line is our TPS value. So you can see from 0% throttle we're just slowly rolling it all the way through to 100%. And transitioning through all of it, it stays pretty damn close to our target value so we're really really happy there. And that's going to lead to then a smooth bike on the road, it's not going to have any hesitation. It's going to pull everywhere nicely and crisply and then obviously when you're opening and closing the throttle it's going to feel the same. It's going to feel nice, it's going to transition well, it won't surge and hesitate and all that, which is not nice. Mm -hmm. So I just got back from P3 tuning in Liverpool. Um, I've had it, the ECU flashed, um, obviously remapping. We gained for horsepower but it's not all about horsepower. Um, just riding back from Liverpool then noticed a massive difference straight away. The bike just feels smoother, just better. It's just nicer to ride. Everything about it is just smoother. We even did some filtering on the way home, and filtering just felt so much smoother. It's just um, everyone gets so caught up on horsepower, you know, how many, how much gains did you get, and all that sort of stuff. But it, it isn't all about that. It's basically smoothing everything out, and that's what you want. It's improving the rideability, and especially with a twin, that's what you want to improve. So straight away, it just feels a lot better. I can highly recommend the guys at P3 tuning in as well. They've been awesome and have had a really good day. Hey guys, so I wanted to come back on and do a little update for you because I spent the day out on my bike yesterday. It's been two days since I had the remapping done. So obviously I've got a better um, understanding of what's changed because obviously I spent a full day on it. So yeah, um, I was talking about, you know, all the low speed stuff. Um, straight after I'd had it done, but being out yesterday, I noticed a big difference middle range. Um, you know, you're cruising along, you put power on, and it seems to be there a lot quicker. Um, just generally, it just feels so much better Oi. in so many different ways, but I just, I can't recommend it enough. I want, I hope this video gives you a better understanding of why not, it's all about horsepower because it's not at all. <laughs> But that's just what everybody assumes and um, I've got some, I've included some bits of the guys talking about it and the knowledge is just crazy. Now don't get me wrong, like it was really good to uh, listen to them and have them explain it to me but it's still like way over my head. But obviously I understand the basics, I know the benefits now, I've found out the benefits for myself. I can prove that. Um, but yeah. It's just crazy and I, c I can't recommend the guys at P3 tuning enough. So if I can convince some of you to do it, um, that'd be awesome. And 
I want to hear your feedback on if you do get it done I want to hear your feedback because I can guarantee that you will be impressed and it will change your bike so thanks guys for transforming my bike for me if you were wondering why I kept looking down and saying stop it this is why <laughs> these are the, the dino sheets that she's kindly ripping up what's that obviously the red line is before and the green after and again 